Welcome to the Wandering Pilgrims podcast. Thank you for joining us again with our discussion on Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. This will be our sixth episode mm-hmm. on the subject. Um, so I guess just a quick recap. Our discussion is on the book Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan that for hundreds of years was the second best-selling book aside from the Bible up until about the last century or so. Um, It is a fantastic read that I would recommend every Christian to read. Um, And since we're six episodes in, I guess we don't need to do a major in-depth recap at this point. (laughs) But it basically uh, goes over a man named Graceless, whose name changes to Christian, and his journey from the city of destruction to finding the narrow way and the wicked gate and continuing on his journey to the celestial city. Um, So if you'd like to hear all of our uh, podcasts on this subject up till now, they're all available. Um, And we will be finishing at some point. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) There's just so much here. But um, feel free to check those out. Uh, And last episode, we left them after Vanity Fair. Mm -hmm. Christian had just escaped from Vanity Fair and gotten back on the road Mm -hmm. and on his path. So that's pretty much where we pick up from. Yep. Um, Spoiler alert. I'm pretty bad about including spoiler alerts, so Mm -hmm. I'm remembering, I'm trying. (laughs) Um, If you haven't read the book, Mm -hmm. there will be a lot of information in this podcast. So (laughs) you may want to check out some of the links in the description, go listen to one, go read one, and then maybe check back afterwards or read along with where we are. Um, If you've read the book before, haven't read it in a while, might want to refresh on it. Mm -hmm. Um, By no means, I mean, we cover a lot in this Mm -hmm. In these episodes, but we still don't even cover nowhere near (laughs) all of it. Yeah. So we definitely recommend reading it, whether you're listening to us without reading it or haven't read it in a while or are reading it along. We highly recommend that you read it Mm -hmm. for yourself, just as we do when we do Bible study episodes. Um, So I guess with that being said, we're at a pretty good point to dive into the material then. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we are. Mm -hmm. Christian has escaped from Vanity Fair and he's back on straight and narrow path to the celestial city. So he's going along. He's singing about faithful. Mm -hmm. You know, he, I mean, he was his companion for a good stint there. Yeah. Got to know him pretty well. So he's on his own, but he's not on his own for long. Nope, he's joined by a fella named Hopeful. Hopeful. (laughs) I love that the two main companions for him during this story, for the main companions for Christian, a Christian, is faith and hope. Yep. So (laughs) I I really love that. Yep. Um, Saying Hopeful is from Vanity Fair. Yes, yes. Like, he's, he's a recent Vanity convert. Fair. And he's a... Um, he tells him that Christian and Faithful's example mm-hmm. is what converted him. Yes. So, they're witness, for, for a better word, for a different word. Mm-hmm. But not through what they said. But how they acted. How they their acted. life was their witness. Yep. How they took punishment and everything as as Christ's last punishment that people witnessed. Mm-hmm. Uh, helped convince some people. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of a hard thing to imagine seeing somebody be tormented, tortured, and eventually killed. Yeah. And they take it not just 
okay, but well, and even joyfully to a point yeah. as far as faithful is concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, so how they responded to adversity mm-hmm. more so than how they acted when things were going their way. Yeah. Convinced hopeful and hopeful says that there are others that will come too mm-hmm. eventually that saw the same thing and, and are on their way to conversion and on their way to their faith for what they did. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's a pretty awesome <laughs> thing here. Um, so, a lot of this, I will say, I have typically put two links in the description. Mm-hmm. I do an old English version that's yeah. the full book, yeah. and there's the shorter version, mm-hmm. which is modern English. Now, I'm partial to the shorter version in mod- modern English. Yeah. But I want to see if I can find a modern English long version. Yeah, that would be great. In an audio book, especially. Mm-hmm. But um, a lot of the parts we're going to talk about today aren't in the short version. No, the short versions, they cut out a lot of dialogue. They did. And we sat and we listened to the long mm-hmm. version while we were getting ready for this episode. Mm-hmm. And... I have to say, I I really don't like that they cut all of this out. Up until this point, mm-hmm. when we've been prepping and reviewing for the the uh, episodes, yeah. I haven't really come across anything in the long version mm-hmm. that made me go, well, that I, that left out a huge part, or yeah. it, it didn't really affect anything. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that this dialogue really affects anything, but it does address some major things that we deal with today yes. and that we see today. So I really I really have yeah. to stress that I, I hate that they left it out of the short version. Well it's just like it, it's just like <laughs> where uh back to Faithful, where Faithful is telling he, he meets up with or what Christian meets up with Faithful rather. And we learn about his after journey. The valley, and you learn about his journey. Yeah. That's not in some versions of this no, book. No, and there's ex and there's more characters and more experiences that they're not as widespread. So when we were listening to it, it, it wasn't as. I mean, I'm sure everybody's met some of those people every once in a while yeah. that Faithful encountered, but it wasn't something that you are listening to and you go, "Oh my goodness, this is a huge." Peg exactly what he's talking about. Oh, or a yeah. huge group of people. And I see these, I see this so much, and I've seen this my whole life. It, it not so much as this dialogue that's coming up. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the things that Faithful experienced, and I like listening to the longer version. You're converting me, I have to, I have to say. <laughs> you are converting me to the longer version. Um, but I do want to see if I can find one in modern English. Yeah. But, and maybe I'll add that in the description for anybody else that wants the long version of modern English. <laughs> if they want to listen to it, if you're an audiobook fan. But, um, so, Hopeful and Christian mm-hmm. are walking along. Mm-hmm. And they meet a man. <laughs> yeah. And the man is in the short version, but all the extra that goes along with it's not. Mm-hmm. The man's name, we learn... Is Mr. By Ends. Yep. By Ends. By Ends. As in, how do you take that name? A means. By any means. Yeah, that's that's what I think. A means to a, 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 means, a, to a means to an end, to or, end. or whatever By means ends. necessary. or What will get me what I want. Yeah, that's kind of how I think of it. Yeah. Okay. So, at first when they meet this man... Mm-hmm. We're privy to his name. Yeah. But he doesn't want to give them his name. No. He's like, I'm a stranger. <laughs> You're a stranger. You don't know me. It's like stranger danger. And I'm like, mm-hmm. really? <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, you wrote this in the 1600s. I mean, come on now. Stranger yeah. danger wasn't really a thing yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, um, so Mr. By Ends does mm-hmm. tell them where he's mm-hmm. from. Yeah. And where he's from is a town by the name 
of fair, fair speech. speech. <laughs> and this town we learn from, I believe, Christian. I think he's talking to Faithful about it. It's okay. a wealthy, or, yeah, I'm Hopeful. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting my people crossed. It's fine. There's a lot of them. There are. Um, so fair speech is a wealthy town. Yes. Very wealthy town. But from the way they're talking about it, at least for the faithful people, mm-hmm. the, the devout traveler, yeah, it has a ba- bit of a bad reputation. Yes. So we hear that part of their conversation. Mm-hmm. And Christian pretty much guesses who he is. Like, Yeah, well, he's hopeful as talking to him. And Christian, as Baez is talking, starts to lag back behind a little bit. Again. He's still paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. But he just starts to lag behind just a little bit. He's observing again like he did with talkative. Yeah. That's a lesson for us all. Yeah. And then he pegs, he pegs who he is. Because yeah. he knows enough he's, about He's heard place. of this man before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and Hopeful told him, Hopeful's like, well, if you think it's him, then just ask him. He he he, he mm-hmm. can't he's not gonna pretend or lie about who he is, is he? Yeah. And so Christian asks him. He tells him that I think you know, I think I know who you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if I guess your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and he does. And Mr. By ends says that that is a nickname mm-hmm. that he does not like. He does not and like didn't it. didn't deserve <laughs> it, hasn't earned it, mm-hmm. whatever, right? So, at no point do we learn of any mm-hmm. other name. Nope. He's just <laughs> referred to as Byans. He's Mr. Byans. So, yeah. to me, if it's not your given name, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's a mean nickname, why don't you give them your real name? Yeah. Know me by another name. I, I'm yeah. undeserving of that name. So, mm-hmm. my name is John. I mean, you know, yeah. Something. So, something. Yeah. Come yeah. up with something. <laughs> but nope, nope. He just says that he doesn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he goes on to, of course, talk about himself. A lot. A lot. Like a talkative. Lot. Talkative like to talk about yeah. a lot of things, too. He gives an entire backstory of the town that he's from. Yeah. And what family line he is from. Which and is how apparently it was everyone. Very, very modest beginnings for his family. <laughs> and how his grandfather raised his family from the muck. And now he has done the same for himself. Yes, he said that his grandfather was a waterman. Mm-hmm. And that he was the same, basically. Mm-hmm. But he made a point of saying that... And to be honest, I have no idea what a waterman means other than maybe somebody that ferries people or does boats or something to do with the water. I'm going to go with that. Mm -hmm. Um, But he said that they earned their wealth Mm -hmm. as watermen, but he he gives a little detail. Looking one way and rowing the other. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So what do you... (laughs) What do you get out I'm of I'm not that? quite sure. I, I mean, I, I could take that a couple of different ways. Like, But a lot, a lot of what he says in this book... Can be taken different ways. Is, it alludes. Yeah. He says it for a reason. Yes, he does. He says it for a reason. Yeah. So maybe not, I, maybe I shouldn't say you can take it different ways, yeah. but... Well, let me, let me step back for, for just a minute and let's talk about his nickname. So he comes by this nickname... Supposedly. Because, because in what he says is that it was given to him because people of his faith tend not to go against wind and tide. Yes. And it, it's, it's not my fault that it just so happens that my opinion happens to be what's popular at the time. So it changes depending on what's popular. Yep. Isn't that nice? So he's wishy-washy. Mm-hmm. So that's always nice. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess you could apply that to the phrase. Yep. Rowing one way and looking, and looking the, other. the other. 
looking for whatever's coming over the horizon to be popular next, so you can go ahead and jump ship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talking out of both sides of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Depending on... If you're rowing forward, you have to be looking backward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about water men and mm-hmm. boating. Yeah, no, I don't either. Ferry <laughs> to really grasp this one really yeah. well. I'm trying. I'm grasping at straws a bit. <laughs> um, so if anybody knows or has a better idea of what this particular thing means, because I definitely take it to be meaning something. It's, it, it feels <laughs> like it's meaningful. And, the and way I that just, it's, I the way can't that a get it. Constructed, yeah. I can't get to it. I can't dig into it enough to understand it. And maybe I'm just limited because of my expertise in the area. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're we're also reading a book that was written in the sixteen hundreds. Yeah. 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 Almost five hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. So, if anybody does know or can has an idea of what that means a little better than we do, please yeah. feel free to <laughs> let us know um, what you think about it. Uh, but he he did make a point, Mister By Ends. Mm-hmm. Aside from telling them that and his origins. Yep. To continue why he is the way he is mm-hmm. and how important he is without trying to sound you know, like he's tooting his own yeah. horn. That the people in fair speech are mostly all of them are related. Yep. To him. To him. <laughs> And yep. he goes through some of the names. Mm-hmm. And these are the kind of people that you will find in the town of Fair Speech. Mm-hmm. So that's always good to take note of. Or at least I think so. Of course, there's one who's named Lord Fair Speech, whose ancestors the town was named after. Mm-hmm. So that one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. He talks pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Lord Turnabout. Yep. Lord Time Server. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Smooth Man. Yep. Mr. Facing Both Ways. Mm-hmm. Mr. Anything. And then the one that I found the most interesting was named Mr. Two Tongues, mm-hmm. and he was referred to as being their pastor. Yep. That he, of course, was related to. Mm-hmm. Mr. Two Tongues is your pastor. So he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. He's saying one thing and then saying another that's totally opposite, depending on who he's talking to mm-hmm. and what he can get, basically. Yep. So that's nice. <laughs> Sounds like a great place. Yes. I see why they have the <laughs> reputation that they do mm-hmm. that Christian knows about. Um, he also has a wife. Yep. I don't remember learning the wife's name. We learned it was her mother's name. Yes, which was apparently more important than whatever her name was. Yeah. The wife was the daughter of Lady Feigning. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're talking Fane, as in yeah. fake. Fake. To false, fake something. False appearances, pretending. Yeah. So she's the daughter of pretending. <laughs> Basically, yeah. and he made a point of saying that she knows how to act around anyone, yep. no matter who it is, how rich, how poor, she always knows how to act around them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, okay, so you're trying to play people? Okay, that's that's nice. Um, and of course, that's all he says about the wife with no name other than the title and the pedigree that she has. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> not a hint of vain glory in there, is there? Nope, not a bit. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, then he starts, they start talking about, I'm never one to go against the, yeah. the wind and tide and, and things like that. But, and here's where it starts to get to the point where I know we're going to go down a rabbit hole. Uh-huh. <laughs> he also made a point of saying that He's the most zealous. Mm -hmm. When religion goes in silver slippers, Mm -hmm. when the sun shines and the people applaud him. Yep. 
So he's the most for God when religion's for him and religion's popular. He, yep, he's the most for religion when it's popular. When it's done something good and people like it. So... Are you ready? Boom! Level one of the rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Level one of the rabbit hole. There's so much... I mean, come on. You're only going... I I mean, and it it does Uh, does go to worldly wise man, of course, who said he only goes when he can wear his slippers. Yep. Well, we have a lot of people that wear slippers Mm -hmm. nowadays, of course, right? But we don't think of slippers like like they did. They were supposed to be nice shoes, not like bedroom shoes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So... That's the first thing I always have to wrap my head around when they're saying these, because, like, it's pretty shoes. They mean pretty yeah, shoes. Pretty shoes. Not comfy bedroom shoes. Yeah. Okay. That part's out of the way now. <laughs> so, whenever religion is dressed up pretty and mm-hmm. it, it's, it's nice to be recognized as religious or when associated with that. When it's convenient for him... To go along with religion because it's being applauded, he will go with it. Because he wants to be applauded. And because he can gain from it. Yeah, that seems to be a a, a, a thing with fair speech and yeah. by ends at this point. It's not... He likes getting the attention, mm-hmm. but his main thing is to gain something, whether it be attention or... Yeah. I mean, this is a lot of well, wealthy Well, the people. issue is, is that he doesn't see anything wrong with it. No, he doesn't. Some of the people in this book that are doing bad things, they're nefarious characters, and they know that they're doing bad things to gain whatever it is that they want. Yeah. He doesn't doesn't. think he's doing anything wrong. No. He's bought into whatever's being sold in fair speech, hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. Because Christian tells him. He's like, if you're going to go with us, if you're going to travel with us... You have to go against wind and tide. Yeah, and you got to deal with religion when it's in rags and looking horrible. Mm-hmm. Just as much as when it's pretty. Yeah. You don't get to pick and choose when you get to be religious. Yeah. And when you get to be a Christian and when you get to care. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't like that at all. No. He didn't, he, he, he didn't believe he was doing anything harmful or that mm-hmm. he... That his way of life was wrong, or the, like he he really didn't believe anything was wrong. No. With how he was. <laughs> well, you came to that conclusion somehow. Mm-hmm. Were you taught it? You had to learn it at some point. Mm-hmm. Were you taught it from a young age? Where were you taught it? How were you? You know, I have yeah. so many questions. I have so many questions. Like, where did it come from? <laughs> why do you think that way? Mm-hmm. Show me why you think that way. And probably the best way to dig into this is to go just a little bit further down the road with them. Yep. Because once Christian tells him, you kind of got to deal with the bad with the good. Yeah. By ends wasn't having none of it. Yeah. So hopefully and Christian were just like, okay. And they went on their way and by ends kind of drug his feet. Yeah, well, they gave him a chance. They They asked him, do you, you know, if you want to, he's like, can I travel with y'all? And he's like, if you're going to travel with us, you have to you have go. have to live this way. You have to go against wind and tide. You have to take your faith for, you know, when it's when it's nice and pretty and when it's dark and rags. Yeah. Like, you don't just give it up when it's inconvenient. And he's like, well, well I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, then you're not going to travel with us. No. Well, then fine. So they bustle on ahead. Well, there, there's also the question that I would like to pose here because a lot of... Uh, it's hard when you find somebody that believes part. Yeah. Like, part of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Most often the convenient part. Oh, yeah. Well, but... I, I've I've heard I've had situations I've seen situations I've read about things where you have a situation where you have somebody stronger in their faith. Let's go with Christian and hopeful. Mm-hmm. They're they're further along the journey, yeah. 
and they come across somebody that genuinely believes in part of it, mm-hmm. but may not be as far along or may be misinformed and maybe not living completely right and everything else, right? Yeah. You'll have people that make the argument, well, they should have allowed him to come along so that they could be the salt and light example. there's a problem with that argument. Mm -hmm. They tried to be the salt and light because they told him the right path. Mm -hmm. And they gave him a chance to continue on the path and to continue to grow with them and to continue to learn. Mm -hmm. He refused it. So it's not like they just left him in the dirt. So if we dissect this, if, if there's a situation like this where you you come across it or people you know come across it. The first thing that they did was they recognized that he wasn't right on the path. Yeah. He's claiming a Christian life. Mm-hmm. So he knows something. Mm-hmm. But he's not on the right path. And they pointed it out. Mm-hmm. They told him the truth. They didn't just go, well, maybe if I befriend him. We won't say anything about how he lives. Yeah. Maybe if I just befriend him, we can pull him to the to the right path. Mm-hmm. No. He they didn't do that. They told him the truth. Yeah. From the beginning. Mm-hmm. When he was unwilling to work with the truth, mm-hmm. they continued on their journey. And some people will say, Well, that's harsh. Ultimately, you have to think about something this way. Or you have to think about it this way. It's their soul. Yeah. It's their journey. Mm Mm-hmm. They can't pull somebody along on the journey. You can't make them go the straight and narrow. They have to want to. Yep. And we're told, Paul tells us, Mm -hmm. that if you have somebody in your church, in your group, that is doing something... Sinfully against, against the covenant. Against the yeah. covenant, that you are supposed to one on one. You've recognized it. You realize it in a loving manner. Mm-hmm. Pull that person aside and talk to them about it. If they continue living that way, or if they can, they just don't care or don't find anything wrong with it. As yeah, by ends in this example. Mm-hmm. Then you are supposed to find one or two others, and this is where you get the. Typically, it's attributed to praying. Mm -hmm. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there also will I be. That verse comes from this. From when one person telling you doesn't work, then you find two or or three of you that are wise, good counselors. Discuss it. Make sure you're right. Mm -hmm. If you are, then you all go and talk to this person. If they still refuse then the entire church is supposed to be made aware of this, the entire group, accountability group, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Supposed to be made aware of this, and you're all supposed to discuss this with the person. Yeah. If they still will not listen and don't want to change Mm -hmm. how they're living, they are to be cast out, is how Paul put it. Mm -hmm. Because they love the world and their lifestyle more than they love Christ. All that will do is bring the world into the group. Yep, it'll poison the church. It'll corrupt it. Mm-hmm. And we already live in a corrupt world. Yeah. It's super hard to live a, a Christian life. Yeah. But we're supposed to try. In general, it's in already general. super hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. But that's why accountability and having someone or a group of people for accountability is so important. Yeah. And that's why the churches used to be small groups that were in homes so that everybody knew each other enough mm-hmm. on, on a good level to where they could do this, to where one person could point this out to the other person. If that didn't work, then the other people, they knew them enough to point it out. Yeah. Because if you go to a church of a thousand people, mm-hmm. you may have talked to 20 of them. Yeah. You may really know five so if one of those five comes up to you and says, you're not living the right way, you might take it. You, you might, depending on how you know they are. Yeah. I mean, let's, you know, you may. 
And that's why there's steps. Mm -hmm. You might not always take the friend's advice. Sometimes it takes outside counsel or somebody outside the Mm -hmm. situation and it doesn't, you know. Yeah. If one of those 20 people you've talked to one time when you've turned around and greeted people Mm -hmm. comes up to you and (laughs) says, John over here tells me you're living a particular way and that's really not that that right. Are Mm -hmm. you going to heed that person? that you don't really know. Yeah. And then if the whole church of a thousand does it, of more than 900 people that you don't know, yeah. you're not going to heed it. No, it's just going to... Make you mad. Alienate you. And yeah. 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 Because you don't know me. How can you judge me? That's what most people say. Mm-hmm. That's why it's so important to have those small groups of accountability. Yeah. And that if you have a group of it, it gives you... St- levels Mm -hmm. so it's not just one person all the time because then you eventually could start feeling like they're picking on you yeah like do you just not like this about me Uh well when three or four people maybe varying ages maybe a couple women and a man or a couple men and a woman or Uh say that we're concerned about you we care about you Uh that makes way more of an impact on a life yeah than a bunch of relative strangers that you commune with mm-hmm. every once in a while. So, I mean, I think it's important to point that out because we're we're given this example in this book yeah. of what to do when you're met with a person that says they believe mm-hmm. and knows some of it but doesn't want to change how they're living. Yeah. They they weren't dragging him along kicking and screaming. Mm-hmm. And they weren't accepting with the hope of changing his mind either yeah they told him the truth from the beginning Mm -hmm. to help him on his path Mm -hmm. now he has the truth he has the knowledge just as talkative was given the knowledge Mm -hmm. it's his to do with what he will yeah he was welcomed in if he wanted to be he's the one who refused it it's not on christian and hopeful yeah and they went on with their journey after Mm -hmm. making the offer Mm-hmm. we've lost that. Yeah. I'm not sure if we ever had it in a large amount. <laughs> but at one point it was more prevalent. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know. I think it's such an important example now. It is. So Hopeful and Christian have walked on. Mm-hmm. Bayans is still on the path. Mm-hmm. But he's drug his feet. Yeah. And then we... This part's definitely not in the short version. Just so anybody... Spoiler alert, I guess. You have to read a long version of the book to get this part. Um, If not, here's like a gist overview. I don't... I don't recommend our Cliff Notes version (laughs) without reading it. Read it. Um, But... (laughs) At this point, three men start walking up the path, Mm -hmm. and they catch up to Bayans. And he compliments them, Mm -hmm. as you should with being from the town of fair speech. Yep. And they compliment him back. Mm -hmm. Well, we learn that their names are Mr. Money Love, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mr. Save All, And Mr. Hold the World. Mm -hmm. And that they all four knew each other. Yep. Since school age. Mm -hmm. Since boyhood. Mm -hmm. They all went to school together. Apparently in a town called Love Gain. Yep. So they love to gain things. Um, And this was, of course, in the the county of coveting. (laughs) So... We're going to covet it, and then we're going to do whatever we can to gain it. Yep. By what by whatever means mm-hmm. necessary. They also made a point of saying that their teacher's name was Mr. Gripe Man. Yeah. There's nothing else said about him. I'd kind of like to know a little more about Mr. Gripe Man. Yeah. Personally, with a name like that. Mm. But that's all we get, <laughs> is the name. And that's okay. But... So they they start talking because they're interested. They see Christian and Hopeful up the road. Mm-hmm. 
and they're kind of like, why aren't y'all walking together? Like, we should we should hurry up and we should try to catch them. And he's like, no, 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 you don't want to walk with these people. They're they're too devout. You don't. Yeah, they. No. The, they God, don't. Those people. Yeah, they don't believe <laughs> the way we believe. They don't think yeah. the way that we do. They look down on us. Yeah. For how we believe. They mm-hmm. look down on us and how we mm-hmm. practice our faith. Yeah. They take religion uh, in his rags. Hmm. I like him when the sun shines and I can walk in public with him and no one's going to get mad at me. And they like, agree, basically. That's way better. And they're like, well, yeah. yeah why, why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> yeah. Why, why would you do <laughs> anything else? Why, yeah. why would you want him at any other point? Um, so then they start some discussions yes that are particularly interesting <laughs> he he poses a question to them you've listened to it more than I have so why don't you start with the first question okay so it, it's kind of, it's a one first question part. Like a two part question yeah, sorry two part question he poses a question um, which I'll pose the same question. That's probably the easiest way to go <laughs> If you are out to gain something. Yeah. And there's a lot of hard work ahead of you. Yeah. Does it make you any worse a person if you discover an easy way. way if you take if you take the easy way out are you less of a christian are you less of a are yeah are you less of a christian are you are you a bad person and they they're all like well i don't think so the issue with that is is what what he's directly referencing is His something that the church yeah the church the the church the church <laughs> did at the time uh, and these things were called indulgences. Yeah. So you could pay. You could buy your way into heaven. Yeah. You could pay for your sins to be forgiven. And there for a while, you could pay for somebody else's after they were dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And commonly, indulgences are, are, are aren't they're not practiced anymore. No. Obviously, but they were frowned upon. Martin Luther spoke out against it. Pretty yeah, pretty loudly. It, basically, um, what it was was a way for churches to make money. That's all it was was a scheme. It's their way of taxing the common mm-hmm. person when they didn't yeah. have a means of taxing the common person. Yeah, more than tithing. Tithing was what mm-hmm. they wanted to give, what they were told to give. Yeah, and indulgence mm-hmm. could oh. con a person oh, into he buying. Died, something. didn't he? Didn't get he didn't get any last rites. Oh goodness. Well, it's a good thing that you're here today. Yeah. For nine ninety nine. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. He can still go to heaven if you pay for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can still go to heaven if you pay for it. Because monetary value really mm-hmm. holds up in heaven. Yeah. I mean, and that's exactly what Bayans is talking about in the book. Yeah. Well, all If you can buy people... your way into heaven, why does that make you a bad Christian? Why, yeah. why does that make you bad? Yeah. Well, well, the whole idea is... <laughs> monetary value doesn't hold any weight yeah. in heaven. Mm-hmm. Don't lay up your treasures. Now, I will say this about the four of them. They will quote scripture. They will try. Yeah. Selectively. Yep. They quote it selectively to prove their point. Because they specifically say when they're talking about how Christian and hopeful are devout... How their argument doesn't stand. Yeah. Because reality and the gospel is on their side. Yeah. And they and they quote one off scripture verses here mm-hmm. and there. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons we're so adamant about do not just do like a verse of the day. Read you if it's need, a yeah. short book, read the whole book yeah, you from need beginning the context. to end. If it's a long one, I know they're hard to get through all in one sitting, yeah. but at least don't jump around. Yeah. Start in chapter one, get as far as you can in that book, mm-hmm. take a break, 
because yeah. that's probably how we'll tackle some of the bigger ones. We'll break them into parts, well, but like, we'll do it from beginning to end. Yeah, well, it's just like I've said, I've said before, and I'll probably say it again. What other book in the world have you ever picked up, opened to a random page, read three lines out of it, and went, I can, I, I can tell you exactly what they were talking about in that chapter? Yeah. You need the you context. Don't. Well, we've, we've even touched on that in this episode, yeah. talking about the where two or three are gathered in my name, there mm-hmm. also will I be. So often, that is quoted in reference to prayer. Mm-hmm. Of course God's there if two or three of you are praying, mm-hmm. but he's also supposed to be there when you're praying alone. Yeah. That doesn't mean that there's not power in prayer, and the more people praying for one particular thing isn't more powerful. Not yeah. I'm not I'm an adamant believer in the power of prayer. Mm-hmm. Um but that's not what that verse is talking about in context. Yeah. I read that and found it out for myself that he was talking about when you're going to try to help somebody who's living the wrong way. Mm-hmm. He wasn't talking about praying for them. <laughs> Together, he was talking yeah. about confronting them mm-hmm. about their behavior. Mm-hmm. But without the context, you wouldn't know. Yeah. If you have no context, you may assume. Yeah. But I don't know that anybody would go off assuming the context. Yeah, yeah I would hope not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. if you just read that verse, what would make you think he's talking about a, a step program for if you have somebody in your church or your group mm-hmm. that is living in a sinful manner. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> there, there's nothing there to make you think that. Mm-hmm. That's why you need context. Yeah. And that's why you always have to be ready and able to explain the hope that you have. Yep. Not with one-off quotes. And that's mm-hmm. why you have to know it for yourself mm-hmm. so you can defend it Mm -hmm. but also so when you go to a church or you're watching something on tv or you Mm -hmm. see a clip of a pastor talking or something if you know it and goodness there's a lot there to know Mm -hmm. but if you've read it at least you have a better idea of if they're even on the same track or if they're way off in left field yeah or if they're grasping, if they're looking to gain mm-hmm. from how they're talking. Yep. I, I I know we were talking about we would love to find a church that the pastor sent out like an email or something the week before saying, My sermon's on such and such. Romans one and Please two. Please read it ahead Please of time. Please read it ahead of time. Yeah. I've never been to a place where yeah. the pastor tells you ahead of time of what yeah. he's I mean, there may be. I, I hope so. I want to find but, it. But... <laughs> yeah. Because you should be able to do that as, mm-hmm. a, as a teaching. Because pastors are supposed to be teachers as well. They're, and they're also supposed to be held accountable. Yes, they are. They are, just, just as we like are. everyone else. They're part of the group. They're part yeah. of the accountability group. Mm-hmm. And so often we set them above mm-hmm. thinking that they know... And and I would hope they they're very well versed. I'm yeah. not saying that. But sometimes you get people that just can talk well. Yeah. Well, see, and that's also a layover from the church, from the old church, when there was one specific person in the church that knew how to read. Yeah. So they were able to get the education. They were able to. Yeah. To learn it more, and mm-hmm. th- I totally understand why yeah. it was that way. But that that's why. That's why during the Reformation period, uh, when you have all of these Bibles being printed and all of this stuff, and everyone is, they're being printed in English, they're not just printed in Latin anymore, or handwritten in Latin. That's why they didn't like it. They're being printed in all these different languages. You have all of these people, all of these little church groups that start popping up in the woods and in barns and and everywhere because everyone can read it it now. now. Yeah. John Bunyan's a perfect example of he that. He is. He is. Yeah. Because he had the uh, the 
material in front of him, and he was able to read it in his own language mm-hmm. and to learn for himself. Yeah. And I, it, it hurts me to the core when I think about how many people suffered, had to live in hiding, burned, were were crucified, were crucified. Yeah. Even if we just take it to the point of just so we could have it in English, we don't even talk about it in all the other languages or, Mm -hmm. or to have the Bible in general or to have it not in Latin. Yeah. They all did that. And then we can't even read it. Mm Mm-hmm. It's. <laughs> you get. Well, it's not. We can't read it. We don't take the time. We're too busy. We put other things ahead of God and ahead of studying mm-hmm. and spending time with Him. Why? Because it's not convenient. I know, right? Certainly wasn't convenient. Or because He's not. For John Wycliffe. Walking in the sunshine or wearing yeah. pretty slippers. Religion may not be popular every single day, Mm -hmm. but it's still important for your faith Mm -hmm. to help you grow. You have to spend the time. You have Mm -hmm. to make the time, and that is hard, Mm -hmm. especially in the kind of world we live in now. Yeah. It's hard to make the time. And depending on how you look at it, it's intentionally hard. Well, of course. (laughs) The harder it is, the less likely you are to spend time in prayer and reading and growing and Mm -hmm. discussing. (laughs) Well, that works out great for... The world and the mm-hmm. enemies of God works out fantastic. Mm-hmm. So since so, we've covered indulgences and buying your way into heaven <laughs> and a rabbit hole or two. Lots of rabbit holes in this one. <laughs> Let's go to Sorry, the next folks. one, <laughs> shall we? Mm-hmm. Then there's the next part. Yes. So he... One of the men... I don't remember. I think Gains... It was, uh, attempts to answer the question with it's kind of a questiony example yeah so he he creates this example to answer the question and what he says is say that there's a pastor yeah. right and of small means right and small con- you know it small, like congregation, a small congregation small means He's living basically off the donations of this small congregation, but he he pines for living larger, having uh, making more money and having a larger congregation to which to preach to. Right? Those aren't bad things to want to make a little to want to make a little bit more money and and have more people in your congregation. Right? They're not bad things. So is it bad if he... If he goes against some of his principles, not all of them, but some of his principles, and warps the word, the truth, in such a way that brings more people to his church, and he preaches differently and more fervently... In, in such a way that bring that brings people in right which makes his congregation bigger and gives him more money so that he can live a, a little bit higher on the hog is that bad is that bad that he is that, reaping that his he, reward that he a, wants way, more money yeah and is willing to lie to people yeah because if you pick and choose what you're preaching to people so that it will bring people to your church? Yeah. You're lying. Yeah. There's no Truth there's no omission. there's no argument there. Truth by omission because yeah. if they pick up the Bible and they read it themselves, mm-hmm. they're going to have just, questions. It's just like when faithful is on trial and he's answering superstition's question. Anything added to the word can only be through a faith of man yeah and therefore isn't isn't godly and isn't true 
and can only lead you down a path to destruction. Yeah. You listen to this a lot. I did. Without quoting. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Sorry. For word at this point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <We're> pretty close. <laughs> it's the same thing when you're leaving things out. Yeah. If well. you if you are leaving things out about while you're teaching people the way the godly way to live their lives mm-hmm. and, and educating people about how they can they they can make the their path. way down the path. You need to it, give if, it all to If them. you're altering the map. Yeah. If yeah. you give someone a map. You give them a shortcut through a swamp or something mm-hmm. on the map. Yeah. You're, you're not helping them. No. You're making it harder if they're going to continue. Yeah. If they even realize that they're in a swamp. Mm-hmm. The issue with these fellas is that they completely agree with that. Oh, it's a, I don't see and anything. they believe it. I don't see anything wrong with it. They believe it. Well, so, they, he, he then does it with uh, a trader. Yeah. Right? Commerce. Someone who deals in commerce. So, say there's a man in commerce who isn't particularly of the faith. Yeah. But... He sees the advantage of picking up religion because the people in his town are particularly religious. religious. Right? So if I go to the church to network, become religious mm-hmm. to bring people into my shop and to look at my wares so that I can make more money, how is that bad? How? The and they go, well, I don't see anything wrong with I that know. at all. He's he's religious now when he wasn't religious before. He's, see, we've pulled him And he's the, making more money. Yeah, like, we've pulled him into the church. Now maybe he'll become a better person. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that that yeah. couldn't necessarily happen. But he's going for the wrong reasons on a personal level. And he mm-hmm. has to want to change on a personal level. Mm-hmm. He's going in for deceitful. <laughs> all I yeah. think of serpent in the garden. That's mm-hmm. all I think of. Mm-hmm. He's not there to be near God, well, Adam, and Eve. Funny, He's it, there to deceive. Is that one of the men says, let's, let's be, be as wise, wise as, as serpents. serpents. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so they can't... What do they believe about how God is? Oh, well, God gives you nice things in the world because you're religious. Your only God only blesses. So God only blesses. Basically. So if And they're all worldly and monetary mm-hmm. things seems yeah. to be. Does that have a term <laughs> nowadays? It does. I it can't does. quite remember what the term is. It has something is. to do with prosperity. Is the word gospel in there? I think it might be. Is it? Mm. So it's that prosperity gospel thing where yeah. you pray hard enough, God's going to give you the mansion yeah. on the hill. And because the, you become Christian, you're only going to be blessed. God gives you nice things. And money. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You, what? If, ha- you want the con- if, if you want the adverse to that argument, read Job. For real. What do you? How how does that? I still don't understand how that how that functions. If God, what happens when something bad happens? Yeah. Well, you haven't prayed well, hard enough. Well, Is that what, the answer? What happens when people who believe this, when bad things happen to them, they drop their faith because they've been lied to. No one prepared them for that bad thing that happened to them. That's true. You have a point. You said that if I believed, only good things would happen to me. And you lied. Yeah. So you must have lied about the rest of it. Yeah. The simple fact is... So if you bring them in with a lie, Mm -hmm. they're not going to believe the truth? Mm Mm-hmm. Whoever would have thought... The simple fact is, and Christian points to this earlier in the book... That the entire point, the entire point, when he's having the argument with, uh, with the dragon. Apollyon? With Apollyon. 
and Apollyon says, "What? What? I can give you whatever." He doesn't save your your Lord doesn't save people. He has never come off of his mountain and saved anyone. And Christian says, "That's the point. The point of of walking this path is to prove your faithfulness to Him and your worthiness." He's already given given you. He's already given us salvation. The best gift yeah. gift he could possibly give. Yeah. What more do you want from him? We. It's up to us to prove to him how deep our faith goes. Yeah. Is he supposed to walk the path for us as well? <laughs> Apparently. I, oh, prosperity gospel. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Mm. The simple fact is, the world does bad things. Bad things happen in the world. Yes, they do. It's on you as to whether or not you keep your faith. Yeah. Does the bad thing defeat you? Or do you dig in your heels and hit your knees harder? Mm-hmm. I... The problem is, is, that a, is that there are some people out there that aren't taught that. They're not taught how to deal with bad things in their life. Yeah. And this group of men is a perfect example of the of those types of people. There's tons of perfect examples in this book. And it's not like I've said before, it's not that they're bad people. They're, they're misinformed. Not, they're misinformed. And they're not reading it for themselves to become mm-hmm. properly informed. Yeah. They're also not encouraged so, to read it for themselves to become this properly is true. informed. So they can't come up with an are any argument against what they've already posed to each other. <laughs> no. They're like, "Oh man, this is such a good argument." There's there's hey, those guys up there that you were talking about before, let's see if let's see if they can answer it. Yeah. Because us four, we can't come up with a good argument against what we're talking about. <laughs> so it must be right. Let's go up and, oh. and talk to them. So they do. But as they're walking up to them, they say, well, let buy-ins, you don't pose the question. Yeah. Like, you don't pose the question because you have a history with these fellas, and there might be some... Maybe they're mad at you. May, they might still be mad at you, so... You don't talk. Yeah, so other guy, I can't remember his name, you pose the question. I think Save All, maybe? Uh, no, it's... Um, hold the World. Hold the World, Mr. Hold, hold the, the world. world. He poses the question. Yeah. So they go up, and Christian and Hopeful stop, and they're like, okay. <laughs> All right. And Mr. Hold the World poses, the, poses question. the question to them. And Christian goes, any babe of the faith could answer 10,000 questions like this. Or should be able to. Mm-hmm. This is a simple question. Yeah. It's wrong. Mm-hmm. You're wrong. <laughs> you don't go to church to gain esteem. You don't go to church to gain riches. Mm-hmm. Or worldly possessions. Mm-hmm. You don't become religious for those reasons. Mm-hmm. You don't try to be on the straight and narrow for those reasons. And if, if we take a step back for a minute, let's be honest. It's a whole lot easier to gain any of those mm-hmm. by being underhanded. Yeah. And immoral. Mm-hmm. So, if you really want those things, it's impossible for you to stay on the straight and narrow. Mm-hmm. If, if you love money that much, you will never be able to stay on the straight and narrow. Yeah. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye yeah, of a needle, needle than a rich man to get into heaven. Yeah. That's why. Mm-hmm. They don't agree. No. He gives he gives specific examples. Yes, Judas and this. Simon the Wizard are my favorite. Yeah. Judas, pretty so, obvious. He gives he gives an example from Genesis, first off, which you'll have to help me with. I don't <sighs> so, know if I remember enough. In Genesis, there is a story yes. about a group of men. Yeah. That aren't. Was it Jacob's daughter? I think so. 
They not, wanted to marry Jacob's daughters. Yeah, basically. They're, they're not and they he, wanted their cattle and everything else. Yeah. They wanted their daughters and their cattle, but they weren't circumcised. Yeah. They're not Jews. Yeah. Basically. So they decided, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah. They're like, well, if that's the only thing holding us back, is not being circumcised. And if we could circumcise ourselves and okay. we can gain all of those cattle plus their daughters. I would also then venture let's do to it. say that there may be some <laughs> some pain involved. I would assume. <laughs> the full grown man. Yeah. So So that's what they do? They didn't think that. <laughs> but the, they should yeah. ask first. <laughs> What is, like, yeah, uh, yeah. How bad ask is this? first. How bad is um, so, but that, that's the point, is that it wasn't for salvation or, or for God. It wasn't that, for, no, it was these for worldly men gain. Took on the faith. It was for worldly gain. Mm-hmm. Judas betrayed Christ for monetary gain. Mm-hmm. Um, and Simon well, the Wizard wanted he to talks be religious. About, he talks about how Judas joined Christ... For worldly things, because he was hopeful that worldly things would come his way if he followed Christ. And then he took, he betrayed Christ and his brothers. For monetary gain. For monetary gain. And then Simon the Wizard. Oh, Simon Simon the Wizard. Or whatever. Yeah. Sees Peter doing miracles and goes, oh. I got to get me some of uh-huh, that to make money. Because people are giving them money, like, left and right. Oh, yeah. That's, They're giving them donations that's to further the, the church. That's the racket right there. Yeah. So you have this imposter go to learn how to be a pastor. And he spends time with, learning. with them. So that he knows yeah. what to say and knows what to do mm-hmm. to get then, money out of people. Yeah. And then when he figures out that he can't do it on his own... He offers to buy it. From Peter. Yeah. That doesn't go over well. Is it Peter or James? Is it James? It's Peter or James. We've been talking about Peter, so. Yeah. Peter's Peter's in our mind, so we may be wrong he, about the disciple. It was a disciple. I remember he that. He offers to buy it, so I'm sure someone will correct us. Please. Been a while since we've <laughs> read that story. But he offers to buy it, and... Peter becomes the disciple. The anger enraged. is why I think it's Peter, because Peter had a tendency of yeah. getting angry. He gets really angry, and he throws the money back at Simon. Mm-hmm. And Simon almost dies. Yeah. Um, via the wrath of God. Yep. And Peter has to pray to save him. Yeah. Well, disciple. Still, yeah. still leaning towards Peter. I ask but. God to forgive the man. Mm-hmm. But the only reason that he wanted to be religious in the first place was for monetary gain. He didn't want to be religious. He wanted to use religion. Yeah. The only way you use religion is to learn enough about religion mm-hmm. to where you can convince other people that you know religion. Mm-hmm. And Helps to be a talkative. Quick, have you... I mean, don't name any names. But have you ever have you ever heard a sermon or have you ever heard anyone on television or the internet that usually will talk about things as far as people are concerned how but you doesn't feel how typically it you bring up God when they're talking not a lot but they're really good at talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got two really, in my head right now. Really good at talking. Yeah. They make a crap load of money. They have really big congregations. Followings. At this point, we might as well call them followings because by the time you include internet. Yeah. People who are more akin to self-help gurus hmm. than huh. teachers of the faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sound familiar? <laughs> like I said, I got two in my head right off the bat. That's what he's Maybe talking three. about. Maybe three. Maybe four. Maybe four. 
Two of them I haven't listened to in a while. <laughs> that's what, I mean, that's what Bunyan is talking about in this yeah. section, in, in this People that know dialogue. the word and would rather use it to for their own gain. Mm-hmm. And that's what these people are about. Yeah. It's about their own gain. They and that's, honestly, yeah. that's pretty much what this whole stint, this whole section of mm-hmm. the book is about. Even after they, at this point, start walking off because everybody's standing in awkward yeah. silence. Hopeful's got a bit of a smirk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he answered. <laughs> he he gives his answers to the question, and they're all just kind of standing around looking at each other. <laughs> so they can't come up. They're like, oh. I love that. We don't have an answer for I that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they walk off. Yeah. Because... I mean, what else do you say about prosperity gospel? What else can we say about it? A lot, and and yeah, a lot, and we're <laughs> more than we have time for, probably. Yeah. But the, the, I mean, the simple fact, the 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 simple idea of this dialogue is that he's he's talking about the fact that a lot of people, there are, are a lot of people that will take religion when it gives them silver. Yep. But when it when they can't gain anything from it. They toss it. Or when it's frowned upon to be religious. Yeah. They either toss it to the side or they hide. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you'll even see part of that narrative through the rest of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um because the thing that stood out the most to me, and let's be honest, there's a lot here, mm-hmm. but this part's what stood out the most to me, was when Christian and Hopeful walked off. Mm-hmm. And Christian said, if they can't stand before the sentence of man, how will they stand before the sentence of God? Yeah. And the answer is they won't. Yeah. Is it a little... Alluding maybe a little, a little back to. To the house of the interpreter, and the dream that that man had. Where they, where he was about just the, stuck. The day of judgment. Yeah. He's in the middle. Mm-hmm. He's in lukewarmville. Some, some of them. Some, uh, some of the he saw, the, he saw the souls of people. Some of them ascended. And descended. And some of them descended into hell, and some of them hid in the mountains. And you're just standing there, being stared at mm-hmm. by God. Like, make a choice. Yeah. Like, if you can't, like, if you can't take criticism, if you can't take another another Christian criticizing how you're acting. I, I think criticizing may not be the correct term because you need to Fair. be able to critique your fellow Christians, but you need mm-hmm. to critique them in a loving manner. And that's something True. that uh, stereotypically in recent history, the stereotype of a Christian has been where you've been berated with, you're a sinner, you're a bad person. Yeah. Mm, typically by somebody hypocritical <clears throat> that's. Yeah. going around doing something just as bad. That's why you're supposed to mm-hmm. try to get yourself mostly right mm-hmm. on that you're not yeah. <laughs> quite there. Well, yeah, that's that, and that, that goes back to what you were talking about. Small groups. Yeah, you have to know each other enough. You have to have that trust. It, what, too. it helps the person you're trying to help for them to know the people who are telling them they're do, doing something wrong? Not just a judgmental, just half a stranger. stranger who said hello to you when it was True. convenient or you were around them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you are supposed to be able to mm-hmm. critique your fellow Christians. Yeah, if and you if you see them, someone, it's just like if you see someone, if you go to a bar, yeah, or you know someone in your congregation is an alcoholic. I.e., they're try they're using booze to fill a hole. Mm-hmm. They're trying to self medicate. It is upon you, as a Christian, to help that person. Yeah. Try to find out what the hole is. What's the reason? Mm-hmm. What's the problem? What's happened? You te- what's- you have to you have to not only help you have to 
show them what that what they're doing is wrong and to also help them to the best of your ability mm -hmm. but just as we talked about earlier you present them with the information mm -hmm. it's up to them to take it and take yeah, your that's helping the thing hand. about that and that's like we can get into a whole conversation about addiction but it, that's that's one thing that like they have to want the help yeah well any sinner any sin anything you have to want the help you have to ch want to change your lifestyle yeah and let's be honest that's one of the reasons riches are and wealth is one of the hardest ones mm -hmm. because your <laughs> life's good yeah that's why would i give it up why would i give it away why would i do it mm -hmm. why uh, that's one of the hardest ones. Mm -hmm. Something along the lines of, of addiction can... There's something, there's a sadness, there's a there's a, mm -hmm. an underlying yeah. thing there. It, there's not the highs of yeah. wealth and, and status. Yeah, and I don't want anybody to be mistaken. It's not sinful to be rich. No. It's not. The love of money. Exactly. The, the, whole, the whole story about that is that there's a rich man who asked Jesus. He's like, I, I follow the covenant. I do all these things. I do everything I possibly can to be the best I possibly can be according to the, to the to laws the of God. What else can I do? And Jesus, being Jesus, mm -hmm. says, give away all your things and follow me. And the man can't do it. Can't do it. He, he can't do it. He loves his things more than mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So it's not bad to have wealth. What's bad is not being willing to give up that wealth when God asks you to do it. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do hard things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes hard things happen and hit you upside yeah. the head. And you wasn't prepared yeah. for them. It, mm -hmm. Things happen to people in different ways. Yeah. Some people come into wealth and have it the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. But you have to be... That, that's why we're called to give the way that we are. Yeah. To help remind us. It's just... It's of the world. It's not <laughs> going to last. Yeah. Everything, help the people you can help now with what you're giving. Everything that you see given. around you is pointless. Yeah. Help the people you can help mm -hmm. with whatever means and gifts yeah. you have. All of, all of the things, all of the houses, all of the cars, all of the money, all of the jobs, everything that was sold in Vanity Fair... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No. The only things that matter are the human beings next to you and God. Yeah. That's it. In the grand scheme, and you of should things, be will. Yeah. You should, as a Christian, be willing to share those things, whatever your with gifts, with other be. human beings, simply because they're they're other human beings. Yep. Whatever gifts they are, whether mm -hmm. it's money, whether it's time, whether it's yeah serving, volunteering. Mm -hmm. Whatever your gift may be. Well, see, this is a, there's another part where it's talked about that. There's another there's another part where it's talked about that everything that you have is a gift from God. Yeah. So if you have something and you lose that thing and you get mad about losing that thing, it wasn't yours to begin with. Yeah, it wasn't yours exactly. It was a gift. Yeah. It wasn't yours to begin with. We so talked why are about you mad that a little bit because it? it's kind of like I, I equate it to a child. I mm -hmm. give you a gift. I give you a prize. I give you something. Mm -hmm. You get it for your birthday. You get it for being good. You get it for whatever. Mm -hmm. You're excited about it. You're happy about it. Yay, yay, yay. Okay. If, if our rule is if you disobey, you put it in a box mm -hmm. upon a shelf. Yeah. I, I, I pick a toy and put it. You, you can get mad all you want, but I gave it to you. Yeah, it doesn't... I can take it away yeah, it if I need to help you learn a lesson or... Yeah. 
you know. I mean, it doesn't necessarily. It doesn't have to be on, on a grander a scale. Lesson. It doesn't necessarily mean Just, that, but yeah. I equate it to child parent. Yeah. Here because I'm. <laughs> you don't I deal own that. It. I deal with that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I deal with the the child and parent thing, so I see a lot of parallels, <laughs> yeah. a lot of times, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it it's. You should be grateful for the things that you're given. Yeah. Even though you may have bought them. Yeah. It doesn't it still doesn't mean that 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 it's yours. No. Because it can be taken away. Just like the, the way you think of you pay taxes on your house. If you own your house, you pay taxes on your house. If you don't pay your taxes, the government's gonna take your house away. Yeah. It doesn't belong to you. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> From the government's point of view, if you don't pay your taxes, guess what? Your house doesn't belong to you. I'd rather go with the house payment in the bank because I don't want to talk about the well, taxes after you pay the mortgage <laughs> off. But that's a whole other yeah. discussion. So I think we've prosperity gospeled it enough. <laughs> just, uh, just, just thinking. I think we've. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've gotten to a point where we can move on. All right. Don't you think? <laughs> um, so, now that they've walked away from the four men that goodness knows. Yeah. Oh, they enter the place called the Plain of Ease. Yep. Oh, in the Plain of Ease, the path is very narrow yes. in the Plain of Ease. Mm-hmm. So, because when I first read this and I heard Plain of Ease, I'm like, oh, okay, well, it must be easy. It's an easy part. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think that's what it's supposed to mean now. It's supposed to mean like easy way out. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of to go along with what we, what's been going on with the other people. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to stay on this very narrow path. Like it gets really hard to not go off into the easy yeah. plane. Um, at the hill of the plane. At the hill of? Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. At the hill of the end, see, I can't even talk. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you try? <laughs> In the plain of ease, there is a hill called Luca. Yeah, called Luca. Luca? Luca. Luca. Luca? I think. Yeah, Luca. Okay, anyway, it has a silver mine. There we go. Yep. Now that the tongue tied is over with. There's a silver mine in this there's hill in the Plain mine. of Ease. <laughs> yep. And there's a... Key. Silver. That's important. Silver. Didn't realize it was important for a while. <laughs> but after <laughs> after listening and discussing this enough, it's important that it's yep. a silver mine. Silver. Now, they make a point of pointing out that the silver mine, the ground breaks away. Very easily when you walk on it. And people go there and mm-hmm. they're never heard of again. Yep, they walk up to look at the mine. The ground breaks away beneath them. And they're gone forever. And they either die or they get maimed. And they're stuck. And they're, they're, they're maimed for the rest of their life. So, Christian Hopeful, mm-hmm. walking along near this mine. And then they see a man. Mm-hmm. And this man is calling out to them. Mm-hmm. And his name is Demas. Mm-hmm. Now, we all know that this book does not typically use names yep. for people. <laughs> Makes a point of saying that he's very gentlemanlike and he's beckoning them to come see the mine. Mm-hmm. Now, I literally, when I hear this part and read this part, think of a used car salesman. Yeah. Because that's yeah. how it seems to me. Come on down. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I think of like a carnival. A barker. Um, a barker. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, him having a name mm-hmm. <laughs> sticks out to me. And that's important. Yeah. But before I go into any of that, he's beckoning Christian and hopeful. Come look at this mine. People get rich. You know, come come on. Come mm-hmm. on down. Come come. See this, it'll make your life easier. You'll have riches and wealth beyond mm-hmm. your wildest mm-hmm. dreams. Christian said no several ways at this point, basically. Mm-hmm. He's then, heard of the mine before. Yes, he has. Yeah. 
he rebukes Demas Mm -hmm. and says he knows who he is Mm -hmm. and that his father was Judas and his grandfather was Gehazi. Yes. Hopeful... Let's, let's Hopeful wanted mention. to look. Hopeful was very curious. And the yeah. only reason he didn't go look is because Christian, Christian was, was like, there. I'm not going down there. Mm-mm. The ground falls out from people. Yeah. Mm-mm. No. Crown, the ground crumbles yeah. away over there. We're not going, I'm then, not going over there. During their conversation, he realizes who Demas is. And rebukes him mm-hmm. and says that Judas was his father and Gehazi was his grandfather. Now, mm-hmm. here's where all of this comes together. And it's because I had to go and read. (laughs) So, Demas was a biblical character. He did not, I say character, I should say person. Mm -hmm. It's a better term. He appears with Paul. Mm -hmm. He, He was a follower of Paul. He actually helped Paul for a while. And eventually we're told, we're not told a whole lot about him. Um, we're not told a whole lot about what happens or where he goes or whatever. All we're told is that once upon a time he was his helper and following Paul and in the way. And then we're told later that he turned away and loved the world. Basically, he loved the world more than he loved Christ and mm-hmm. and the message of Christ. Yeah. Worldly things. Okay. So that's Demas. Mm-hmm. A lover of worldly things, of easy things, the easy path, the or an easier path, mm-hmm. riches, wealth. So he's the barker for this. Mm-hmm. Well, Christian names two people as his predecessor, predecessors. Mm-hmm. Now Judas wasn't literally Demas's father, yeah, and Gehazi wasn't literally his grandfather. Judas, everyone's pretty familiar with. Mm-hmm. Betrayed Christ for silver. Mm -hmm. Silver mine. Silver. That one's pretty easy. Gehazi, I had to go and read. (laughs) Had to go and read there. So Gehazi was Elisha, not Elijah with a J, Elisha. He was his servant. Okay. And there's a story about Elisha and Naaman that... I'm going to allow everybody to go read the story with Elisha and Naaman. We'll get into it later when we do that Bible study episode. Mm -hmm. But Naaman had wealth. And he he had made an offer of money and and things and whatnot to Elisha. Mm -hmm. And Elisha had sent him on his way. He wasn't... That wasn't the purpose in him being and doing what he did. Yeah. So he just sent him on his way. Well, Gehazi took it upon himself to think that his master should have taken what was offered. And then he gets it in his head that he's going to go after Naaman. Mm-hmm. And he runs after him and then lies and says that people have come and now, and now Elisha needs clothes and, and a talent of silver. <laughs> Well, Naaman is like, take it, take two, take whatever you, you know, he's get, you know, Mm -hmm. he gives it to him. No big deal. (laughs) So he takes it. Of course, Gehazi takes it, right? Mm -hmm. So it started out more of a, he should have taken it. Well, now he's got it. Mm -hmm. And when he gets back, Elisha asks him where he's been. He tells him nowhere. He lies again Mm -hmm. now that he's gotten the stuff. But Elisha knew what he had done. And uh, then Gehazi was cursed with leprosy after going Ooh. back and lying about it and was cast out from mm-hmm. Elisha. So you have this man who all we know basically was that he was on the path with Paul and turned from it for the love of the world and worldly things. Mm-hmm. Wealth, g- gain, power, esteem, whatever. Mm-hmm. Silver mine. Judas was silver. Gehazi was silver. And now we know why they're used. Yeah. Both times they basically betrayed the right way mm-hmm. for silver. <laughs> 
So yeah, that's who those are. And <laughs> as they're walking off, Christian and Hope will get to talking going, you know when Bayens and his friends get over here. They're going to take a look at the They're going to want to go look at the mine. Yeah. Guess what? They do. They were right. Never heard from these people yeah. again. We don't know whether they fell into the mine and died or whether they went down to dig in the mine and drowned in the damps that... Or died. Just Yeah, mine floods. Nobody gets out of the mine, really, no. once they go down yeah. looking for silver. They don't really come out. Yeah. Once they go down that path. So, the next part is they come to, and it just sticks out to me as being odd, the placement. And mm. I kind of understand it, but still. They come and see this pillar of salt mm -hmm. with, of course, a sign over it that says, uh, to remember Lot's wife. Mm-hmm. For looking back. Mm hmm Coveting her things, coveting her Being life. Covetous. Um and I know that it kinda goes along with what mm -hmm. we're we've been talking about with them and everything, but at the same time it just kinda sticks out as to me it's just a little odd. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. To you. Well, it's using it as an example because when they come upon this pillar of salt that kind of looks like a woman. Yeah. They're staring at it for a while. And then Hopeful's the one that sees the words written on top of the pillar. Yeah. That says, remember Lot's wife. And he freaks out. <laughs> Hopeful freaks out. <laughs> Christian is just kind of like, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. But Hopeful, like, freaks out because he's like, oh, my God, I did something so bad and I didn't even realize it while I was doing it. Like, here's this woman who was saved from Sodom and Gomorrah and the destruction of those cities and was turned into a pillar of salt Simply because she turned around to look and to look and be covetous of the things that she had lost, and she was looking back. I wanted to go see, yeah, I wanted to go and see the silver mine. So, what I've done must be must obviously be worse than what she did. Like, how do I atone for that? Like he's freaking out about it. And Christian is basically like, oh, calm down. Well, you didn't go. <laughs> you didn't go. You're you okay. You didn't go. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you had know, the thought. That you're you correct. But calm down. Like, you're, you're okay. Yeah. I mean, I, under I understand the placement and I understand the lesson there. It's just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I get it. It's it's the ending to this this part of that yeah, chapter. It, yeah. It, it's a it, it's his way of ending it, saying like, remember this whole don't time, look back at the all things of you've this, given up. All of this dialogue, all of the the silver mine and Darius. Remember Lot's wife. Darius, you mean yeah. Demas? Yeah, Demas. Sorry. Remember Lot's wife. Yeah. Don't go a looking. Mm -hmm. Basically. Don't be covetous. Yeah. Don't covet worldly things. Don't look back. Mm hmm In a covetous manner. I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it does kind of cap all of the prosperity and the... I, mm -hmm. It does. I just... <laughs> I don't know. It just seemed odd yeah. to me after all that discussion and silver mine and... Mm -hmm. And then well, that's that. why you get in shorter versions that leave out the dialogue that we've previously yeah, talked about. I guess that's part of it too. Sometimes you'll get you'll get the silver mine, yeah, but then you don't get the pillar of salt, yeah, because the pillar of salt directly ties in to the first two things. Yeah, I yeah I get that. I see that. That's true. So 
after that part, mm-hmm. they finally come to what is called the River of Life. Yep. Where they drink from it and they're refreshed. They're able to rest there. Mm-hmm. There's fruit trees. There's you're you're safe. Mm-hmm. You can sleep. And they 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 tarry there for several days, eating eating the fruit of the trees and and drinking the water from the river. Mm-hmm. They have a a lovely time. Nice little to rest. Three day weekend with picnic basically. <laughs> yeah. Sounds pretty nice. But it refreshes them and gets them ready mm-hmm. for their journey to mm-hmm. continue. And the the path diverge once they get back on the path. Well, how far do you want to go down the path in this episode? <laughs> That's my question. Yeah, I guess we should hold that one off for for the next time. I think they're at a good a good place to leave them until mm-hmm. the next time. So, I guess that's where we will leave them for this episode. And we will pick back up with them next week after we do some more listening and some more reading and some more notes (laughs) and some more research. (laughs) Oh, goodness. But we should hopefully be done with this, by the way, which is the first part. (laughs) <laughs> this is part one. This is part one. <laughs> We're hopefully, still in part one. Hopefully we'll be done with it yeah. in one or two more episodes, mm-hmm. I would think. But I really, I really love this book and I really love the discussions that go along with it. Yeah. And how helpful it is. Um, but, so, I guess that means that we have come to the end of our discussion for... Mm -hmm. now so if you'd like to read along with us or you'd like to check out some of the different Pilgrim's Progress options you have for reading or listening check the description I put a ton of links in the description of all different kinds of Pilgrim's Progress (laughs) as well as some other things I think you may find interesting Mm -hmm. Uh, some of those links by the way are affiliate links with Amazon we're Amazon affiliates which means that if you happen to purchase something through one of those links, whether it is one of the Pilgrim's Progress books or you just click on it and happen to do your Amazon shopping through it, it will support this channel mm-hmm. and this podcast. So, And it also has no additional cost to you because Amazon's the one who pays the commission. So we think that's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you'd like to support us that way, feel free. Um, if not... That's totally cool, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, But definitely check out the stuff in the description. We've also got uh, Facebook and Instagram links in the description as well. We typically end with a quote, but since there's so many from John Bunyan and Pilgrim's Progress Mm -hmm. uh, to choose from, we decided to do visual quotes on Instagram with these podcasts. So feel free to check those out, please. Uh, we always love to hear from you guys, so feel free to drop a comment or a message um, on Instagram or Facebook as well. Um, can you think of anything else? Oh, I can think of a lot of things. Oh, I know you can. <laughs> but are you good? I'm good. All right. Well, I guess until next time then, keep wandering, pilgrims.